Welcome back to SnowRunner. You join us back on Smithfield Dam in Michigan, just the other side of the dam, in fact, of the warehouse in the Scout 800, as we're looking to explore more of Smithfield Dam. So the plan is to go to the southwest of the map, unlock the watchtower there, and see what's around. This is the brand new bridge that we built in the last episode. If you haven't seen that, go back and have a look. We managed to build a bridge. Go us. <laughs> so, in the Scout 800, we're going to try and travel up to this watchtower now. Looking at the map from what we can see, this is quite a long journey. Um, and I know people have said they prefer me talking through these videos. But this is a very long journey. Um, and I've got a feeling it's not going to be the most exciting journey in the world. So, I may not talk for all of it. We'll see how we go. But we're going to mission a pick up first and foremost as we're passing. Which mission is this? Uh, unlucky fisherman. Okay. Fisherman has been unlucky. Let's have a look what we need for this one. There it is. So we need to deliver a Chevrolet CK1500 back to the fisherman's house. And you can see it on the map to the right hand side. So I'm guessing it's drowned or something. And we need to go and recover it and bring it back to the fisherman. So that will be something we'll do. At some point in the future, we haven't really attempted many of these rescue missions, to be fair. There's a couple that are still in Black River for us to do as well. So that's something we may look at in due course. But we haven't really risked it just yet. Mainly because we did try a trailer on Black River and it was so far in the water, I had no way of getting to it. So I'm not too sure how we're going to manage some of these. But we'll figure it out as we go. Back on the road then. Let's keep travelling up here. And hopefully it won't take too long to get to our destination. It just is not knowing where the road is leading can be tricky. That's the thing. And every time you see a little turn off, you're like, okay, do we go that way? Do we carry on? Now, I think that's the quarry down there. To our left. Yes, that's the quarry down there. I'm not looking forward to doing that. And that looks really dodgy to me in terms of getting down there. Um, so that's something at some point we need to go and explore and do. And I'm sure there'll be a mission or so to actually drop off there as well. Um... Okay, so coming up here, there is a right-hand turn that will take us up, but it's a very narrow pathway. My only concern with taking that pathway is it's not going to be a very nice road. And I have a tendency to tip over the Scout. I kind of say it's my fault, but the, the Scout seems the most tippable tip vehicle going. Um, it's one of the easiest vehicles to roll. It never takes damage when you roll it. But it seems to roll really easily. I don't know if it's something I'm doing. Or it is just the vehicle in general. But it does seem to have a very weird centre of gravity. That makes it really susceptible to rolling. More so than anything else. The Chevrolet that we used to use as a scout vehicle. Never used to have that issue with it. It barely ever rolled over. There was a couple of occasions it did. But that was more my fault than anything else. Whereas this just tends to roll whenever it wants to. Right, this is the long winding path. So the right hand path now we could take. But as I say, it's a bit of a weird path that I'm not 100% certain on. So I think we'll stick to this winding main road for the time being. Just because it's just more of a safer route. Um, <laughs> I say that as I drive into the barrier <laughs> and damage the engine. We can fix that to be fair. We've got repairs on us. So let's quickly fix that, just so we don't see any drop in performance. Um, nice, easy, quick fix. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, this is the safer route. Probably the more boring route. In fit. Well, I don't know. We don't know what we're going to find. We might find something really interesting. But um, it does seem like the most boring route. And I'm not looking forward to doing this in other vehicles. Not because of the road type. The road actually is not too bad. Even the rocky bits there aren't too bad. The bit that I'm not looking forward to is just the boring nature of a very long winding road. That's not going to be fun to do in any vehicle, to be fair. There's very few fuel stations we've seen so far, as well as Miffle Dam. There's one right near the entrance when you come from Black River, and that's it. So this side of the map so far, we haven't seen a fuel station. That's a little bit of a worry. Obviously, the Scout can carry its own fuel, but everything else? If we're doing jobs this side of the map, are we going to have an issue with fuel, potentially? I don't know. I know you can get fuel trailers. That I'm assuming you can just load up with fuel and leave places. That may be something we need to think about doing if we start getting lots of missions um, this way. And I think as we go up here, I think we're going to find the um, point we head to Drummond Island, I think it is as well. 
I think that's right at the top of this bit of the uh, this road as well. Uh, new trailer discovered. This is a sideboard trailer. What does that have on board? Let's have a look. Okay, that has two times service spare parts. Interesting. So I don't, I'm not a fan of those kind of trailers because they carry you drag them behind you. I don't mind. I want. I like the trailers with the low saddle, high saddle. They're absolutely fine. The ones that go further back on, on yourself, I find tricky. And the only vehicle so far we've got that I think that can travel at a decent rate across the landscape in Michigan so far is the Fleet Star. And we have had trouble in the past with dragging things behind it. So, not too sure. But we may have to use... If we need those for a mission, at least we know they're there. Um, I can't remember if we have got a mission that needs them or not, actually, at the minute. Hopefully Drummond Island needs them. We just take them through. That'd be nice and easy, wouldn't it? But we never know. So the road is still going pretty well. Bendy. Um, there's a bit of debris on the road, as you'd expect. The flood can't have got up this high, though. Because we've gone up a long, long way. Which is not something I was expecting. It's quite a hilly area, to be fair. I would assume the views in the in the sunshine might be pretty good from up here, to be to be honest. But I don't think we're going to see them at the minute. But the, the scout doing as it does. It just keeps going. Um, we did it previously. The engine that keeps going. It's just one of those vehicles that just keeps moving forward. And say my only real complaint is how easy it is to tip over. Um, and it could be a driver driver skill issue rather than a vehicle issue. But I find it's the only vehicle that tips really easily. So it's potentially my fault, to be fair. That's my only fault with it. But I do prefer it to the Chevrolet. Mainly because of how much it can carry, you know, fuel-wise. Um, the, the amount it can carry to fix other vehicles as well with the repairs. It just... Yeah, it just... I think it puts the other Chevrolet to shame, to be fair, when it comes to scout vehicles. Okay, we are making progress. This road just keeps on going, though. Wow. It is a very long road. I didn't... I, yeah, I didn't know how long this road would, would take, but it's a very, very long road. Luckily, a lot of it is tarmac, so... At least it's not mud or anything silly like that. There's a few rocks like this bit. We've had some rock slides. But other than that, it's not been too bad a journey so far. I don't want to speak too soon. We'll suddenly get to a, like, a sheer face cliff edge or something. <laughs> and have to navigate that. But uh, yeah, so far so good. And as I say, the scout never puts a foot wrong other than rolling over. A bit more muddy section now. I was it nervous when we got any sort of angle. Oh, that's a bridge. It's a weird narrow bridge, isn't it? Okay. Nice and easy to, to, to traverse, though, to be fair. Just a small bridge. I, was, I just wasn't expecting that to be this high up. I thought if you're going to have a bridge, have a proper bridge. But at least it's built. At least we didn't get there and go, ah, oh, okay, we need to go and grab the fleet star to bring something up to make the bridge ourselves. It's already there for us, which is a bonus. We must be getting closer now to our destination, hopefully. It was a bit more bumpy that area there. Fleet Star doing a bit of bouncing. Not Fleet Star, sorry, the Scout. Bouncing around on the road. But I think we must we must be nearly there now. I don't wanna I don't wanna look at the map constantly, but I think we are getting close. Just trying to remember what the map shows us. If we're looking at the map constantly, we're not driving at the end of the day, so we've got to keep trying to move forward, so I can't keep opening the map to see where we're going. But we're doing okay. Ah, definitely can see we're getting closer now. So, uh, is that a road there to get to it? Potentially? Might be a road to get to the watchtower there. See if we can just spot this road. So this one here. There's an opening there, isn't there, in the barrier. So I think this is the watchtower. I think we've finally made it up the very long winding road while I've been droning on. Singing the praises of the scout. Although now it's got a little bit of a tough time to get up here. This is where the scout either lets me down or shines. <laughs> Which one are we going to go for? It's one of the two, isn't it? Um, do me let while we're doing this, let, do let me know in the comments what do you think about this exploring and showing it all. You know, I could happily drive around, get the watchtowers, pick up a load of missions and not show any of it. But I kind of feel like we're doing this journey together and exploring is part of the journey. You know, it's not a simple quest to deliver from A to B. The exploration is part of it as well. 
And we did in the last episode where we cut between picking up missions, and I kind of understand that side of it. But do we show all this, or should we, you know, skip a lot of it? You guys let me know in the comments what you think, just so I know going forward. That is the Watchtower. Let's get it up and see what's around us. Well, that's just about everything caught up. Let's have a look around. So, we've got a couple of upgrades it's shown us as well. It's opened up a big corner of the map, to be fair. So, what have we got? We've got an upgrade over there. So, I see where the path, the road is to get to there. We know, obviously, of the quarry down the bottom. Uh, the fisherman is there. We know about that mission we picked up earlier. There's a trailer store there. Okay. Warehouse. Another time mission. Drummond Island Gateway, we knew that was kind of in this area as well. And then another upgrade there. And a mission to pick up, I think, by the sense. Okay, this doesn't look like... Mm, it's, it's an okay area. There's not much actually here. I was expecting a lot more. Uh, it shows that most of it is down the other side, then I would assume. So, there's a weird house on its own there of a road leading to it, but no, nothing there showing up. So we may need to go and have a look at that, just to see if there's something there. We may find a trailer, a vehicle, it may be absolutely nothing. It seems weird of a house on its own. Some of these roads though, or tracks, they're not really roads are they? There's going to be some awkward places to try and get to. There's another upgrade over there as well, that looks into a very swamp, boggy kind of area over there. Not looking forward to that side of the map. That looks tricky to traverse to be fair. But we're here by the watchtower and we need to figure out where we're heading next. So I'm thinking we need to head back to the main road. We'll have a little look at the trailer stores we pass it. We've got the warehouse, see what it actually has in terms of what we can use it for. Gateway to Drummond is there. And then I'm thinking the little house we're going to explore as well. Just in case there is something there. There's a chance there's nothing. But I think there might be. So that is the plan. So we need to get down out of here first and foremost. It was tricky to, to get up here. So going down is going to be interesting. And I can't return on the hill. So we're going to reverse down. Oh, I shouldn't have gone. I tried to. I thought, okay, we're probably safe to turn now. That was a mistake. When I said we roll this it really easily, Scout 800. Fine example of us rolling it. <laughs> but it doesn't suffer damage. So it doesn't seem like there's any downside to rolling it. Obviously, we've got the autonomous winch on. As long as we can right ourselves, rolling the Scout isn't a bad thing. There's no, We don't lose anything other than time. Writing it, writing it really. It's a shame there's not an auto write system, you know, the doors open up or something, the flippers over, that'd be handy. Alright, let's get this thing back on its wheels. I'm going to carry on down to the road bit. Come on, let's tip back over. Sometimes this is really easy to get back on its feet, but other times, not so much. This being the one that's not so much. Um, now it's being annoying. Come on, just flip back over. Nearly. Ah, oh, come on. Come on. It's not doing anything, is it? But, uh, so close. Come on. Engine's on as well. I think we're there. I think we're okay. Yes. Yes, we're okay. <laughs> I'm sure this won't be the last time we roll it today. We just one of those things that I, I do a lot. As I say, it is only this vehicle I do it to. To be honest, that was my fault. We were reversing back and I thought, okay, we can turn now. Turning on a hill like that is not a fun thing to be doing. So we've got to reset our markers because we actually entered the road from a different area. But we kind of roughly know where we're going. So this is the main road down here, I believe. You can get through the gap. To the left here. Don't. There we go. There was a bit of fencing there that I didn't want to really hit because that would have been damaged, I think. Okay. So we follow this road. This is still part of this main road system, I think, that we originally came up. So this main road must take us straight to Drummond Island. So that journey to Drummond Island using the main roadway doesn't seem too bad. Especially when we've got some of the long journeys with logs and things. I'm sure there's a mission I've seen taking logs there. But it's going to be a very, very long journey. 
That's definitely not going to be anything quick, is it? Okay, try to store to our left. So that's the second one we've seen now. So we know there's one near Drummond Island. I don't know why would you'd need one that close to Drummond Island, to be fair. Because I'd assume Drummond Island has its own trader store. Uh, let's have a look around to see if there's any trailers already here that we need to activate. Doesn't seem like there is. It's a bit of a shame. Sometimes you can just get trailers laying around and you don't see them until you actually go next to them. Um, but there was always a chance there would be, but sometimes there isn't. At least we tried. So let's keep going forward. Um... We have the warehouse now on our right hand side. There we go. There's the warehouse. Let's have a look what we've got here. Might find a trailer here as well, to be fair. Let's see what they have. We've already seen on the map there's a time mission here somewhere. Not a fan, but we're, <laughs> we have to do them at some point. Just not looking forward to them. I think we saw a time mission, did we not? I can't see it though. I thought there's a time. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm thinking of the other warehouse where there was a time mission, to be fair. Maybe there isn't one here. Right, what materials can we get from this one? So we've got wooden planks, concrete blocks, metal beams. Ah, uh, okay. So if we'd gone the other way, and then had to come back and do it a bridge, we have to bring the stuff down from here for the wooden planks then. But then we've got the trader down the bottom of the hill, so... Either way, there is a time mission here. I knew there was. Yeah. I'm ignoring time missions for the time being. So from here we want to... Head across, we've got an upgrade and a mission to grab over there. So from here, we're going to go to there. We'll have a quick look at the Drummond Island um, point as well. There's a house I want to go and see just there because, I don't know, there's something about it having a road to it but nothing else going on. Seems a bit weird to me. So I do want to go that way. There's an upgrade there, which is where we'll go next afterwards, and then the, uh, the mission to pick up as well. That's the plan. Let's go and see the this bit down here just in case they've got anything sneakily hidden I've started that mission haven't I you see the time mission already started I didn't know I'd already started that mission Let's, can I cancel that let's re refill how do I cancel the mission I don't want to be doing it uh, is it going to, I don't know if there's any bad side to having it on must be a way to stop it though, mustn't there? Oh, there we go. Cancel. Perfect. I was going to say, there must be something simple to get rid of it. I don't even know when I activated it. I must have done when I went on it to see what it was all about. But yeah, we're not ready for time missions just yet. I'm pretty sure. I think a lot of them you can probably set up to a certain degree as well, hopefully, just to help. Okay, so we've got a right-hand turning here, which is where we're going to be heading a second. But first, straight ahead of us, will be the Drummond Island point. There we go, that's the tunnel to Drummond Island. We'll be heading there at some point. I don't know when. Um, as I say, we've still got stuff in Black River to go back and do. Just while we're here, it makes sense to do stuff here. Um, but yeah, we do need to head back to Black River at some point. There's, I know, at least logging, there's a few vehicles to pull out of swamps and stuff. Um, yeah, there's a few things. So we will be heading there at some point. But it, while there's stuff we can do simply and easily here, it makes sense to stay here and do it. We're going to have to go to all four places anyway um, before we move on from Michigan. I want to try... My aim is, and as I've said this a few times, um, not to buy any vehicle. other than Use the only vehicles we find. Um, it does mean we do need, do need to buy the GMC back after selling it, but we need the money at the time. And the other thing was to not move on from Michigan until it's 100% done. And I th from what you guys have said, that does mean the time missions need doing. Which is a shame, because I really don't want to do them. But if they need doing, they need doing. Whether you need to pass them fully or just attempt, I don't know. We'll figure that out when we get to that. That's a little way off, I think. We've got two other maps to go to yet. Right, this house is a very dodgy road to it. But the scout is getting there. We need to do some more damage to the engine. But we can fix it if we need to. There's nothing here, is there? I was hoping there was a vehicle or a trailer or something that wasn't shown on the map to say, yeah, you're here, this is it, thanks for coming. We're hidden away, but you did come and have a look, so here you go. Unfortunately, nothing. Nothing at all. It's not really what I was hoping for. <laughs> but there we go, we, at least we've checked. There may be a mission in the future that sends us there, I don't know. This seems weird to have a road to a house that's not included in anything so far. Unless there's a mission down the line for that house. I suppose we'll find out in due course. Okay, we're going for the upgrade next. 
Um, and then we'll head to the mission and then we'll see what time we've got left and we may go for the other upgrade as well. That's the plan so far. But first of all, we've got to get off this awful road. It's not a nice road at all to get to that house. This is more, that's why it's more disappointing there was nothing there to be fair. Go all that way and it's a horrible journey back. Okay, this is the road we want coming up. So we take a left. Is this going to be any better? A lot of these, these off-road roads. Off-road roads? Tracks? I don't know really what you call them. They're not that bad to traverse. They're, you know, they're pretty smooth and then we've rolled again. You don't want to say this vehicle is so easy to roll. Case in point. Um, a lot of them are pretty smooth and not too bad. Some are a bit tricky like this one where it's very bouncy. Further nice, easy, smooth ones to be fair. But we've got to try and navigate the terrain as best as possible. Let's just roll over again. <laughs> That's twice in this one bit. Oh, yeah, I, it is. That is probably me that's doing this. It really, I'm probably being too too excited with the accelerator, trying to go too quickly, maybe um, turning too soon on the angle on the wheels. Yeah, it's, there's it's obviously stuff that I'm doing wrong. I just find this is the only vehicle we can flip a lot out of all the vehicles we've used so far. Which isn't many, admittedly. But it just seems to flip a lot. But let me know what you think. Is it my driving that's the issue? Should I change my driving style with the Scout? Or is it the Scout itself that's just easy flipped? Do let me know in the comments. I'm interested to see if you guys have the same issue I do with it, to be fair. Okay. Trying to go... Oh, come on. <laughs> Again. We're heading down this hill. Uh, okay. We're going to roll down the hill. We're not going to head down and we're rolling. Again, no damage being done. This is the thing I do like. Every time we roll, there's no damage. Which is always good. Oh, no. We've got an issue. There's no winch points. We cannot write the scale 800. I think we just failed the mission. That wasn't really what I wanted to happen. But there's not much we can do about it now. We have to recover the scout and we're now heading back to where we were. But we're going to take a different route. So because obviously we've already gone up that long winding road. I don't fancy doing it a second time. We're going to follow this route that we saw when we started on that winding road route. That takes us up to kind of the edge of the of the mountain hill. It's a mountain surely. Um, we can grab that upgrade there that we couldn't do from the other side. And then I'm hoping from there we can get to the other upgrade and the mission as well. So this was the road we were looking at quite early on in today's episode as we were started on this journey up this twisty windy road and we were saying if we knew exactly where it took us we'd probably use it but because it's an off-road kind of area we'll follow the main road all the way to the tower. I don't think we made the wrong decision but this is a quicker way I think of getting to where we want to go especially for that upgrade that's there as well. Um, but we are struggling in the scout a little bit here. It's quite steep, which is the issue. The scout does lack a little bit of power. Um, although, to be fair, if it had any more power, I'd probably roll it a lot more than it would do. And it already rolled it a lot, so <laughs> power may not be the best thing for this. But, uh, yeah, it is struggling more than, so, more than I expected it to. It has got all-terrain tyres on, I believe, as well. I think every vehicle now is all-terrain tyres. Um... I don't know what rank we can get mud tyres and that kind of stuff. I, do, I probably need to look a bit more at tyres and just see what we're aiming for in terms of what ones are next kind of thing. Because um, I don't really know offhand. So I might need to look at. All terrain tyres though for me work perfectly so far. I'm pretty sure when we go to, is it Alaska next? You know, chain tyres are going to be your go-tos aren't they? But here there's a lot of mud but there's also some roads. And all terrain kind of gives you the best of both. Um, obviously mud tires are brilliant in mud but bad on roads so you don't you've got to allow for that when you're looking at the terrain and going right this is the tire I want to use I do think we should have some um, off-road tires and mud tires and things when we have opened them up but I don't know where how often they should be really used maybe putting these vehicles out of these swampy areas perfect but I don't know how badly it affects us on the road We'll go back in that in a minute. Anyway, we're here on the first upgrade. So, this is the one that we saw that we weren't originally going to go to. And this is freeway. 
Okay, it's a gearbox, interestingly. It gives you more gears and your high gear. Okay, but the downside of the, of the high gear is it damages the durability of the low gear. And it is for the Scout, the Chevrolet CK1500 as well. So basically, you can go faster, but for off-road for off and um, hills, low, low range is going to be bad. Or not as good as it currently is. That's my gist of what that was saying, to be fair. Okay, so this is our route to finish us off today. We're going to try and grab that upgrade there and the mission that's down there as well. And that will be it for today's episode. As I said earlier on, you know, let us know what you think about these exploration videos. Do we carry on doing them? Do we just go and do it? And you guys want to see the missions themselves? Just let me know. I, I don't, as I say, I don't really do anything away from recording for SnowRunner. I don't go and do a few missions on my own. Everything is recorded and shown to you guys in some way, shape or form. Um, I did prefer the splitting, picking up the missions bit. I think that made sense. Rather than show, you know, 50 minutes of me just driving, picking up three missions would have been a bit boring. Yes, that's how long it took. But I think um, for exploring like this and Watchtower and stuff, that kind of makes sense. And this is all places we've not been. So I think showing it shows the change in terrain and stuff like that. But I may just be talking rubbish. I'm just trying high gear here a few times just to see how it works. I was trying to see if it helps would help us on the hills. But I know high gear is generally used is it when you're just already at a really high speed, essentially. So I don't think we've really got any use for it here. But I'm just wanting to see if it'd help us down these hills. But it just tends to stall the engine instead. So uh, yeah, won't be using that. Okay. Making it down this awkward pathway here. Yeah, it's not helping. I wanted to try it, you never know. If it helped on the hills, stopped us rolling. Brilliant. This is tight and narrow and steep. Come on, be good, Scout. I think the issue I'm having... Uh, no, I thought I'd saved it. I really thought I'd saved it there. Oh, that's annoying. I think the issue I'm having on these hills going down and rolling the Scout, it is, and I think it is driver error, is I tend to turn ready for the turning coming up. Whereas if you kept on straight until you get to the bottom and then break, you're less likely to roll, are you? Because you're carrying on where the force is taking you. So I think it is something I've got to change in my driving style. Especially when going downhill. You know, don't change wheel direction. Keep it in line with the route you're taking down the hill. Um, and once you get to the bottom, you can start braking, lower the speed, and then you can decide which way you go from there. The only reason I turn early is because I'm always conscious of stopping. Because I find that if you stop a vehicle, you're more likely to get stuck. Whereas if you're always on the move, you're less likely to get stuck. That's the kind of the way I've seen it so far. But, yeah, I definitely need to improve on them downhill sections as much as possible. I think I think that is definitely something that I lack massively. Oh, this has changed. This is a boggy area now. Wasn't expecting bog. Well, the all-terrain tyres are going to come in here, hopefully. Keep us moving in this mud. I did not expect this. Does it show that on the map? It doesn't really, does it? We need to take a right-hand turn here as well. It doesn't really show this kind of mud and water on the map, I don't think. Normally you can see really big puddle areas and stuff, but this doesn't have it. Right, we've got ourselves a little bit stuck here, so we're going to need to pull ourselves out with the winch. Try and use a bit more power at the same time. Just keep moving us forward. Um... And where are we heading? Are we going right from here or going straight? We're going right, aren't we? Hmm. Okay. I don't think this is going to get much better at the minute. And even at ultra... This is where mud tyres may be coming really well. Um, and all-terrain tyres just aren't quite good enough. Then it's that compromise you take, isn't it? Or anything else. If we use the winter bit to keep us moving forward here, we'll be okay. It does look like it dries up as you go further on, to be fair, looking at the map. We should be okay, hopefully. Just going to get past this awkward bit first. The scout is still moving, though. We're still moving forward in some shape, way, or form. Just about. Okay, I think we're taking our left here. Oh, this is tight. I don't like these tight sections. <laughs> this is where I tend to roll the scout. And that's a hill as well, isn't it? Okay. It's going to take a time. Make sure we split, fit between the rocks as well. Come on. 
it's quite a small vehicle to scout 800 to be fair I don't want to be bringing a trailer this way I just think this would be a really awkward journey to do a trailer hopefully we don't have to use this road again once you've got the stuff that's here that's job done happy days hopefully everything else is main road based that would help ok I think I need to turn left no we're going straight ok we'll go straight and see what's there I would have thought we had to make a turn, but I could be wrong here. Still awkward though. Okay, we've got more mud, more rocky areas. But as, as, as we've said in previous videos, the Scout 800 is really good. I think if we'd been using the Chevrolet for this, um, we probably would have had more accidents. We might not have rolled as much, but it would have struggled, I think. Uh, I don't. I need to compare power. I don't know if there's a way. If anyone knows a way of comparing power, let me know. Um, as far as I can tell, you can just compare engines. I don't know enough about engines to know which has got more power. To be fair, and I think power to weight ratio. There is a. There isn't actually a, not a letter for that. I need to pay more attention to them kind of numbers for the vehicles because power to weight ratio is quite important, especially when towing. Right, we have the. Up don't do it now. We're here. This is the upgrade we we're going for. There's one more thing for us to pick up as in this area as well. First, the upgrade. The upgrade is race suspension. Okay. Ah, for so a vehicle we don't have. <laughs> I know you can sell these upgrades, but then obviously if we get the vehicle, we'd have to buy it back. So I'm a bit loath to do that. I think we're just keeping our inventory at some point. We'll hopefully find that vehicle, we'll be able to use it and add it to our list and. Add the race suspension. Oh, come on. Rolling already. <sighs> that should have been an easy out, but instead I've made it harder than it needs to be. Oh, we're too, oh, we're too far from the trees as well. Come on. Give me a point. I would have preferred a, a point on the, on the right so we could have just pulled ourselves over, but instead... We weren't quite close enough. We must have millimetres away from being able to do that. Okay, now into the middle. Hopefully it pulls back towards the tree. Don't slide it. Roll us. Come on. I'm, I'm trapped underneath it, and yet it's going to leave us here laying on the floor. Because <laughs> we can't get it to go normally. Good job it's got a roof on. There we go. We're good. Finally. Can we stop rolling this now? I don't know who I'm, who I'm talking to about it. It's just, it's just me that rolls it. It's not the vehicle's fault. I don't think it is anyway. But yeah, definitely, it might, it's, this is going to win the award. When we finally finish Snowrunner, the Scout 800, I'm pretty sure, won't win the award for most rolled vehicle, unless we have another vehicle that takes over at some point. But I can't see one that's worse when it comes to traversing terrain than the Scout 800. Everything else about it is really good. The amount of repairs you can carry, fuel, you know, the vehicle itself is fantastic other than it rolls so easily um, that it does cause you issues but we're nearly here this is the mission we want to pick up while we're in this area there's a trailer there as well okay so this is tools delivery let's have a look at what we need to do and something we can add to our list we need to deliver the curtain side trailer, which is the one we just saw here, to the warehouse near the dam. That is not a fun journey. No. Okay. That's something we need to look at at some point. And when I say some point, I mean some point in the far, far future. I'm definitely not ready for that just yet. And that is us out of time for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. A like the episode does really help the channel as well. We'll see you next time for more Snowrunner.